Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Marquia. Um, I'm sure a few more people are trickling in and coming in on Zoom, but I'm going to go ahead and start. So if you're here, you probably already know me, chances are, but a little brief background. Marquia Humphreys. I'm from Jacksonville, North Carolina, so that's about four hours away, and I'm a studio art major. So I've been doing this for the past four years, and today I'm going to get to share a little bit uh, with you all. Um, so just, uh, I guess I'll go over sort of like my artist statement, my overall theme. I do a lot focused on community, uh, specifically um, Black communities and how those develop and how those are impacted by not only the individuals who are with it, within them, but the spaces that they're in. So, you know, Charlotte would be considered a space or institutions like college or, you know, grade school, stuff like that. Um, other than that, I'm a little all over the place with materials. Y'all will get to see if you're in person. Um, but I guess I will go and start talking about my first piece, which is this one right here. This is um, titled George uh, Junius Stani uh, Jr. And I did this in 2020. So this was my <laughs> sophomore year, I believe. And for those who don't know, George is the youngest person to die of electric chair in the United States. So he was wrongfully accused, wrongfully accused and convicted of um, murder uh, when he was 14 years old. And they had a really short trial for him. Um, it was 10 days. It was an all white jury, like during Jim Crow era times. So very unfair, had very um, few facts to actually convict him. Like it just wasn't him. <laughs> um, but I decided to uh, do a portrait of him because one thing that's been on my mind a lot um, or that's come up a lot in my, what do you call it, practice. And my practice has been um, education and children specifically. So thinking about children and black children, um, oftentimes they're like tried harsher um, and are more likely to be tried as adults, more likely to receive longer sentences. They're more likely to even get put in the cop car in general. So I'm just thinking about the fact that like kid, we're still seen for our, the color of our skin before we're seen for, you know, who we are as literally a child. So I like to think about like the fact that most people, when they look at this, they're like, that's a rock, you know, that's a big rock rather than like seeing the kid on it. And yeah, so the rock before the kid um, and just think about how Linking that to my title of <laughs> um, Collisions of Inadmissible Fantasies, um, that title came from a James Baldwin book, and it's about misrepresentation and media. Um, James Baldwin was, he was just like explaining the fact that the things that he would see on TV, the Black people he would see on TV were so vastly different from the Black people he would see on the streets, you know, like it just was a complete shift of reality. And he's like, how are there, the people who are writing these, like the media, the narratives and stuff are so disconnected from the people on the streets that like, it just doesn't, like there's just a clear disconnect. And um, I connect that to the idea of collisions and stereotypes because as soon as you, you know, you are one way and then someone else views you another way, like that, that is, that's gonna cause some sort of tension and frustration and you end up getting kids put in jail for things that they're not supposed to be in jail for or put in an adult jail and stuff like that. So yeah, that's my title and this first piece. <laughs> I'm gonna to move to the next one, all the way over here. So this next piece is much more recent as in literally this month. Um, and it's called, Does Our Love Scare You? So this, these are, this is a portrait of my parents. I, I, I was over winter break, I went through our photo album and was just like pulling pictures and sort of snuck them back here with me that I liked. Um, but this also bring, ties in my title in thinking about inadmissible fantasies and misrepresentation because growing up for me, I, it was very rare that I got to see um, black couples on television or especially black couples who were just a normal family. It was always, there had to be some sort of issue, some sort of major conflict or struggle. And um, I was just like, please, can we just get something normal, you know? <laughs> um, so just thinking about the fact that um, 
Ooh. <laughs> that there are these like misrepresentations out there. Um, hmm. The title, Does Our Love Scare You? I think just brings out the fact that I, I don't understand why that like those sort of mis misrepresentations or just like the idea that black couples either have you know difficult relationships which is something that all couples deal with regardless if you with someone you're gonna have your issues you know but um I just don't understand why that has to be the narrative and why that's the narrative that is formed so just thinking about like like does our love scare you like what what is it about it and and I wonder if there were more because we all know that representation matters you know as soon as you see someone who looks like you on television that that can make a huge difference difference in your life regardless of your age so it just makes me wonder that like if we were putting more positive stories out there um like how would that affect the community how would that affect people individually um i'm gonna stop there with that um so I'm only going to explain those two pieces, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask, type through Zoom, um, or if you're in the other room, you can also, I think there are a few interns in there who can help with questions. But, uh, and I missed like the first minute of your talk, so I'm not sure if you covered this, but I was wondering what the connection is between your 2D and 3D work, like conceptually. Okay, yes. Yeah. So what is my connection between my 2D and 3D work? Um, I would say outside of like my broad theme of community, I think I approach 2D and 3D work a little differently in terms of when I'm painting on like a flat surface or like a canvas or there's like a fake attempted canvas. <laughs> type thing, I usually bring my ideas to that material or to the canvas, to the flat plane. Whereas if I'm working with something like, you know, sculptural things, wood or the rock, like I just showed you before, I usually find those materials first. And then I, um, the like idea sort of forms based on what those materials are like saying to me, I guess. Um, hopefully that answered your question. I notice a theme. Can I just say it like this? Or do I have to go through the chat? Oh, yeah, you can. You're perfectly fine. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I, the theme of concrete and the road. Could you elaborate on that um, metaphor that you use um, in a ser several of your base pieces? I thought that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So the theme of concrete and road, I feel like come up. I, I've noticed myself being drawn to like heavier materials, but especially things that are typically traveled on because um, in my junior capstone class, so like mostly last year, I was thinking a lot about journeys and life for an individual to transition from point A to point B. So drawing on my own personal experience, I'm thinking about what it was like to come from a, like a small, like rural hometown to be put into like a bigger institution. I know Davidson's not that big, but for me, this is a big institution around a whole bunch of people and the different like tensions that are created when I'm around all of these, you know, upper class people. And it's just, um, yeah. So that's like my personal experience, but I think the roads and the like the bricks and the rocks and the concrete is definitely coming from thinking about journeys and thinking about traveling uh, through your life, but also thinking about like what it took for you to get in the spot you are today. So like someone else had to, in terms of like my parents, like my parents had to go through what they went through in order for me to be here. So not only my own personal traveling, but all of the traveling that happened beforehand, before I got here. Thank you for your question. <laughs> that was good. Hi, Marquia. Here's a question from the chat. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So someone is asking, can you talk about the asphalt piece in the center of the room? 
Yes, I can. Should I move towards it? Okay. Walk over here. Um, so here, I'll wait till the camera moves. But this asphalt piece is really heavy for one and uh, it's a perfect stand for things. But to talk about what it actually means, um, if you get the chance to come in here, you'll notice that there are like red lines and blue lines going across it. So um, for me, that's supposed to like look like a piece of paper along with the railroad spikes. You know how railroad spikes have, or not railroad spikes, but how paper has holes in them on the side. So I was thinking in this piece about education and again, linking back to the idea of journeys and traveling um, and what it took for people to get where they are today. Uh, both of my parents did attend and graduate a college institution, but my, it took a while. So after they graduated high school, well, my dad went straight into college and he, coming from the projects, his only example of college for him was, you know, what you see on TV. So partying and having fun and all of that stuff. And I think for him, that made it really difficult to snap into the college, like academic mindset in terms of I am here for a reason when that's like to learn. Um, so he ended up, um, he left school and then came back and went to another school type thing. But my mother didn't even, her parents um, were only in the workforce um, and she didn't have a lot of exposure to the ideas of college and what that meant. So she actually had some scouts coming to her and asking her if she was interested in college and her parents told her that there was, you know, there was no point in going. So this is, <laughs> to bring it back to the piece, this is thinking about, um, I guess you would say, okay, I'm gonna go in a weird direction, but I would say mentorship and the importance of knowing the importance of something in order to do it. Um, but it's titled High Road. So yeah, I would say knowing the importance of education and like using it as a way to take a journey outside of where you are, um, even if, yeah. I'm gonna stop there. I don't know if I answered that very well, but if you're still interested, like I can put out my email at, on the Zoom as well, and then we can talk more about it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, our kids. This is Grace, being the beautiful black woman you are and the beautiful amazing artist you are. What is the way that you feel like you have grown as a black woman and grown as a woman in general and an artist? Wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> That's a lot. I heard the first part, but yes. Yeah. Wait one second. We're coming closer to the mic. Oh. Yes, if that is there. Yeah. Okay, I was just saying maybe there's one piece you can highlight that you've grown the most during the journey of making it, and maybe highlighting a way you've grown as a black woman and as an artist during your journey and through your art. Hmm that I've grown the most through, especially as a black woman? That's a good question, thank you. So I think in terms of growing the most, um, even as a black woman, I would say this piece. So um, this is um, a mixture of a lot of woodcuts I did over this past semester, my senior capstone class. This is a relatively new medium for me to be working with wood and actually using jigsaws and stuff. I still have all my fingers, surprisingly. There are a lot of cuts places. Um, but I would say this piece sort of forced me to grow because I one thing I rely heavily on is lots of color. If you haven't picked up on that, <laughs> I, am, I love color. So this forced me to sort of think about pieces more structurally and in that way, I also started to think about the, like the idea of community, not less about like the individual people and more about the environment itself. So thinking about those places um, that people exist, whether that's like housing or like even things like little things like playgrounds and stuff like that, like how individuals interact with their physical space around them. Yes, thank you for your question. Hi, Markia. Here's another question from the chat. 
Um, this one says, beautiful work, Merkia. A lot of your work comments on media like the news and TV. How might newer media like social media enter your imagery? How has social media entered in art? I believe that was the question. Yeah, how might um, newer media like social media enter your imagery? Mm -hmm. That is a good question. I think, I think what I see happening on social media is there's sort of like this shift and movement towards um, like black people uplifting themselves. You know, it's a platform because the nature of social media is that you can put anything you want out there. And because of that, I think we're seeing a lot of individuals, you know, you know, show themselves off, show off what their friends are doing, um, all of that stuff. And I think it's allowing like the narrative to sort of start to shift in a more positive, more inclusive, more um, direction. <laughs> Um, that's not to say that like everything about social media is good because we all know that it's, you know, it has its problems as well, because just like we can put those positive things out there, like, you know, 30 years of marriage, someone else can post a video of someone getting, you know, murdered or something like that. So there's pluses and minuses to it. I don't think I've ever really thought about social media as much. So that is a good question. I, that is something I hope to explore some more. Thank you so much. And if there is, if I can ask another question from the chat. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Which artists are you inspired by? Which artists am I inspired by? So there are so many, um, but recently I, an intern was helping me move this piece down here and they were like, oh, like, do you, did you um, make this piece based off of Kara Walker? And I completely did not, but she has been one of my favorite, favorite artists um, since you know, my career here at Davidson. So for those of you who don't know, Kara Walker is a black female artist and her pieces a lot of times are these massive like silhouettes and they, she has a whole bunch on a wall and they like create this narrative and you can sort of like look at them all at once and see the whole story, but also you can like look at a few together and just like see like their interactions and it's just so incredible. I've never got to see one in person, but uh, maybe one day soon. Um, I would say she's definitely one of my biggest uh, inspirations as well as my junior year, I did a lot of research on um, Jacob Lawrence and he does a lot of artwork. He has a whole series where it's talking about, I think it's called migration or it's somewhere around migration and talking about how after um, whew, there was a migration of uh, a, like black people from the south to the north and just talking about like that transition. Um, it's an amazing series. It's like 30 something pieces. Um, but I would say those are my top two artists. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. Here is another question from the chat. Okay. The piece behind you is very different now than when it started. Can you talk about how it came to get together? Um, yes. So like I said a little bit earlier in the, um, whatever this is, <laughs> artist talk, um, I've been working with cutting wood this semester. So these started off as like individual pieces. So you can see that they're all sort of, oh, that's a little shaky. Um, they're all individual. And I was just like sort of trying to build up my skills in terms of like how to cut, like what all I can do, all of that stuff. Um, and they all had more specific themes, but still all centered community. But over winter break, I was in my studio and in all honesty, I needed to clean the, um, clean the studio. So what I did was I started putting everything on the wall. And once it was all up there, I was like, I like that. Like, 
I've been struggling all semester with these pieces individually and feeling like they haven't been complete on their own. And I wasn't sure how to like wrap it up. I was like, is it color? Does it need like drawing on it? Like more collage? I just wasn't sure. But when I had it all up on the wall upstairs, I was like, I love the way the shadows fall and all the intersections and all. Um, so when it was time to like install my shelf, I brought all the pieces down and I started putting them up on the wall. This is the first, well, the second piece I installed, but, but um, I, as I was like making this, this was the first thing I made and then the pieces, their placement off of that. Um, but yeah, that's this piece. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now, if you're in person, feel free to um, come in and we can, you know, chat more. And then if you're on Zoom, um, I don't know if you can put more questions in the chat or I can put my email in the chat. That way y'all can reach out to me. There we go. Um, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> there are so many people I want to thank you that the list goes on and on. But of course, I want to definitely thank my professors like Katie and Court and uh, Joelle and Tyler and Nicole. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I have everyone. Thank you so much, and David. Um, and there are just a number of other people who have been influential um, in my four years here. So thank you all so much. And thank you all for coming and listening, even if you're listening live or listening later. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So. Thank you all.